All right, here we go. This is going to be a special video about Jeff and his martial arts experience. And this also goes out to uh, a Jim Cornette fanboy named Max Dahl or Dahl or whatever the hell you spell it. I'll show you the I'll show you that the link in a moment. Anyway, we got in this sort of the pissant uh, pissing contest over Jim Cornette. Because on one of his videos, I made a comment putting Vince Russo in the 2023 WWE Hall of Fame and have him being inducted by Jim Cornette. This guy named Max Dahl, who obviously is a Jim Cornette fanboy, said, do you want to see a live murder on TV? And I commented afterwards, I said, Jim Cornette talks tough, but he isn't. Half hour later, he replies, Oh, really? Have you fought him? And I said, in response, I have a first degree black belt. I've got colored belts and different other martial arts. Plus, I was in the infantry for 20-something years, and I did two tours overseas in the infantry. So I'm a little hardened. So yeah, I think I can pretty much take on a 300-pound marshmallow when I myself only weigh 169 pounds. I work out every day. I do my sit-ups, do my push-ups. I do my cardio. I do my martial arts stretches. Yeah, I could pretty much take them on. So in case that he makes a big bitch and all the rest of you guys complain that Jeff is just talking a lot of shit, we're going to do some pictures, huh? This is me, October 1973, 50 years ago. Almost 50 years ago. Okay, I started young. Started at the, the time, 10 years old. I was getting bullied in school, so I got tired of it. And my stepbrother, Joe, who owns three black belts, and he was living with us at the time. That's my mom taking the picture. Living with us at the time... Opened up his own martial, stu martial arts studio just right up here, about a half a mile from where I live now, back in 1973. Okay? Here's the last surviving certificate from Norman Leff, who was my original instructor before uh, Joe took over. Norman Leff was also very much so friends with Count Dante, John Keenan. If you guys want to use the reference for John Keenan, better known as Count Dante, look up other videos. I got a video on Count Dante. He came in once and instructed us. Anyway, this is the only surviving martial arts certificate from the 1970s era. Unfortunately, the orange belt and the green belt and the purple belt certificates burned up in a fire in 1980. This is the only one that survived. And you can tell by the burn marks. It was inside the box and it was getting heated up. So, that just tells you I'm not full of shit. Karate techniques include karate, jiu-jitsu, judo, and wrestling. We had to train in all that stuff just to get our certifications. There's me doing a jumping back kick as a brown belt in JJ Taekwondo. And the picture came out good. Yes, that's me. Sorry if you think it's a phony, but it's not. And uh, Master Luis was uh, one of our instructors. Master Luis holds a bronze medal in Taekwondo for Mexico. He was a Taekwondo guy that was in the Olympics, which was really, really badass. And that was me doing a jumping back kick for a demonstration to the kids out there. That was... Uh, that was Help instructed uh, during the kid classes. There's me with my purple belt and this other guy named Danny. And, uh, yeah, we were purple belts at the time. I looked a lot younger. Here's us as orange belts. And um, we just graduated from our purples to our orange during one of our testings. There's me again. And this is us again. Man, I looked young back then. Look at that. Even my eyebrows were still had color. This is us during our green belts, our certifications. And yes, JJ Taekwondo, Taekwondo. Am I a fake? 
Taekwondo, huh? You're going to tell me that I'm a phony, right? Here's me again. And this is before our class. I, I was a brown belt at the time. This is like a couple years later. And you can tell by my hair growing out. And that's uh, Master Chung, our instructor. He's a fifth degree black belt. And he was also a, a martial arts instructor in Taekwondo for the South Korean Olympic team. So he came over to America roughly about 10 years ago and uh, opened a martial arts studio. Pretty fucking badass. That guy is really badass too. And there's me as a red belt. Uh, when we came out of one of our classes, we were training up the preschool, the youngsters, the preschool kids. And then the following class afterwards was all the adults, which, of course, I went and uh, helped instruct. See, we was part of the black belt club. But I got to get my black belt first. And here's me with my black and red belt. Um, this is roughly about a year and a half to two years later, roughly. Yeah, man, I started aging. Look at that. But, you know, there you go. You know, I, at that time, I started training for my black belt. Am I a phony? Hmm? 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 And there's me when I got my first degree black belt. I didn't have any pictures of me when I got my black belt because I trained for I tested for the black belt and then turned around on the same night, tested for the first degree black belt. And those are my martial art trophies. And no, I did not get them on eBay. No, I did not go to a trophy shop and have them engraved. I actually have the engravings. So if you guys are saying, well, you're a phony. Well, I'll show you the engravings. And then, of course, naturally, smart asses will say, well, you got them engraved that way. Yeah, okay. Whatever you say, bro. And there's me as a red belt. And we was um, doing some early, early... Um, warm-ups before the class started and um, we was uh, we had all the youngsters this was the young class so Master Luis needed me to help out and do some training with the youngsters and this is before we were doing some uh, board breaking techniques and this is us during uh, uh, during uh, one of the little graduating classes and I was an instructor with Master Luis, Master Chung in the background, and we were uh, training the Mighty Mites. And they were all in the background, and I was right there with Master Luis, training all the kids. Here's the guy I'm talking about, Joe, stepbrother Joe. He's now deceased. He, was, uh, he died in 1984, but he was a three-time black belt he had black belts in karate, judo, and um, some sort of kempo style. So um, I got all my training, my later training after Norman left, um, closed down his school and Joe opened his school. I went to all the schools. I went to, I went to his school and I did all the training with him. And we trained at least five times a week. So I was getting, I gotten uh, three of my belts from Joe's uh, martial arts studio before he shut it down. Dim Mac. Yeah. That's Count Dante. He came in one time and trained with us. Norman Left was a friend of his. This is me as a white belt um, um, when I was starting Kempo right before the COVID. And unfortunately, the COVID shut down the Kempo school. I was in my first three months in Kempo when I took this picture, and I was already training for my yellow belt. And unfortunately, it got shut down because of the damn COVID. And there's my engraved uh, first-degree black belt from JJ Taekwondo. And they were showing uh, I was getting um, an upgrade to my belt. I, my red and black, I got a... A uh, what the hell did they call? I forgot what they called it. It was in Korean where you get the uh, the uh, um, it's like a degree, you know. I mean, you could be like a brown belt with fifth degree or something. I had like a degree on mine before I got my black belt. And here is my certification for my first degree black belt certification. 
uh, Dan Certificate for First Degree Black Belt from, that's right, from the World Taekwondo Federation. It came in the FedEx from all our testing, and I actually drove up in that car, picked it up from JJ Taekwondo, come down, and me and the grumpy old guy took a picture of it. And here's the actual official ID card for the Black Belt uh, uh, Club in the World Taekwondo Federation. So is that fake? Um, someone's going to probably say it's fake. And here's some more of my certifications on the wall, including my uh, Black Belt and my First Degree Black Belt. And there is the World Taekwondo Federation. So... Am I a phony baloney? Are you going to tell me? And yes, I still can do my uh, jiu-jitsu and my karate. I still can do it. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, Jeff, you're a big fake. You suck. You're a phony. Well, I also served in the military, in the infantry of the United States Army. And here's me in Iraq. Yeah, please tell me that uh, I'm a phony. Here's an IED attack on our one of our 1117s. Uh, and there's me again doing a combo check. Before I put my body armor on, so we can go out the go out the door and go do our uh, convoy mission to Baghdad. And there's me at the Baghdad staging yard. Here's showing some IED damage. There's me in Kuwait. There's me in Iraq with another guy I trained up with. Here, me clowning around. Um, IED attack. And uh, here's us rolling through into a Camp Cedar. Camp Cedar again. See that? That vehicle in the background? That's Blackwater. We did a convoy mission with those guys. Those guys are assholes. There's me again with a Mornblade sticker. Camp Cedar, Iraq. Whoa! And here's us on the road. There's me again in Iraq. So, welcome to Camp Cedar. Here's us at TQ. When we blasted through uh, Fallujah. Um, a stalled vehicle on the side of the road as we passed. You can see that I put my M4 out the window just in case I get shot at. Um, here's an accent that was brought up by an IED attack. And then he rear-ended the truck after he was hit. Here's us at Buka. And here's uh, IED damage in the 1117. Uh, this right here is just outside of Fallujah. And this is Talil Waiting Yard. And there's TQ Iraq Store. That's just pretty funny. Uh, we're blasting through here, going our way to um, Baghdad. Um, they had an attack two days before that. Here's us on the road. I'm in the passenger side. Here's the whites that we do uh, uh, escort missions for. Here's that engine that was pulled out of the vehicle that was hit by the, uh, the EFP. See that? Went right through the armor and busted the crankcase. And, you know, anyway. So, oh, here's us going to Germany back in 95. Yeah. Some of our guys, squad leader, Sergeant Terrell, who has long since passed away. There's me back in the day in 85. There's me in 85 again with an M60. So we got a number of little things here. Some friends that I served in the military with. Anyway, um, yeah, so again... Uh, this video is going to go out to the smart asses who don't believe that I was ever in the military. Who doesn't believe that I'm actually a martial artist in a black belt? Um, Camp Virginia, crappiest place. But here's Fallujah I took a picture of. Ah, here's where we go, an MSR Tampa. We used to do missions all through here. Scania, Baghdad, yeah. Cedar over here. And, of course, you know, you get IED Alley. And this is part of the Sunni Triangle of Death. And we rode right through the side of it. 
at the, on the corner. Pretty fucking radical, man. Pretty radical. Camp Cedar to Iraq. Ta-da. So, Beasley's no longer around. Kinghorn, rest in peace. Uh, Sergeant Ski, rest in peace, bro. And there's me about 17 years ago. And uh, here's guys from A Company. There's me in 2002. I was a young man. Here's Freeze Ass and the Deuce and a Half during the windstorm. And warning shot fire. Carrasco, who passed away. Sergeant Ski again. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Jeff the Pharaoh, and letting you know that, yes, I am a martial artist, and yes, I am in the mil was in the military and retired, and here's all my certifications on the, oh, the damn thing slipped down, look at that. Anyway, so if this guy says, can I fight Jim Cornette, more than likely I can probably jack him up pretty good. You know, I even at five foot six, 170 pounds, I can still throw a six foot spinning back kick like you wouldn't believe. Anyway, this is me and this video goes out to you and to the disclaimers. Yes, I am a martial artist and yes, I was in the military. So there you go. Whoop.